The title of the exhibition is Quick Light. We wanted to focus predominantly on Alex Katz's landscape paintings. He began painting landscapes in the 50s and really um, turned his attention to them in the 1980s and then through the 90s started experimenting with scale and making what he describes as environmental landscapes that envelop the viewer. Alex Katz's paintings look deceptively simple, but in fact are the product of six decades of refining his technique of trying to find a language through which to represent the world as economically as possible. He strips away all unnecessary information to leave only the essential ingredients to give you that very instantaneous impression of a subject that you have when you're looking at them in the moment. The art history I was brought up was mostly romantic. 19th century into the 20th century. The point in that time, everything was like with fixed values, right? Like modernism actually was very fixed. And fascism and communism, they all had to do with fixed values. And once you question the fixed values, it becomes very interesting. I had a retrospective in the, the mid 80s. And when the retrospective was over, I thought that most retrospectives are failures because they don't look good. And the ones that are successful, the artist usually repeats the work. And I didn't want to repeat. And I had gone to the country and I'd seen a little bit of snow against a tree. And I thought that would be kind of interesting to expand it. And so I developed this interest in making an environmental landscape, a landscape that it's not like a window in a wall, but something that wraps around you. I like the light of uh, Pollock and, and de Kooning and of Sargent. And uh, the Impressionist paintings to me all seem like a slow light. I wanted the painting to get off the wall kind of quickly at you. Katz is always interested in painting the present tense. Many of the paintings take a particular time of day, whether that's 4 p.m or 7 p.m., and that's the title of those paintings, or capture the changing of the seasons, which obviously has a very nice parallel to our location in the park. The gardens around here are so elegant, it's hard to believe. Uh, the English uh, uh, cut the trees from the inside, so they move out, and the French and Italians cut from the outside. Uh, Central Park is modeled after the English gardening. The paintings are, are elegant, which, uh, seems to fit here. Actually, I think it fits here better than the States. I started going to Maine and I fell in love with the light. There's less light in a way and the colors are richer. And the further north you get, the more rich they are. New York has its own light. In the winter you get brilliant skies that are kind of really great. And it has a lot of atmospheric light that you don't get in Maine because you have a lot of industry that, and the, the uh, bad air comes with the nice colors. They say life size is when you measure someone, but it's not how you perceive people. My example is, you know someone who's alive and all of a sudden they're in a coffin. You say, oh my, how small he is. The energy that radiates past the person is gone and it collapses to the actual size, which doesn't correlate with your experiences. And the, the large faces in the movies are life size to you. You perceive it as life size, but you're looking at a 20 foot face. And so the trick is to make a huge face plausible as life size. And the oranges came just like uh, a whim. I was painting with a lot of white at backgrounds. And I got, just got bored, painted one orange and said, wow, let's go. The failure of a lot of painters is they don't look at other paintings. They're fashionable and interesting, but then they don't have the multi-dimension of a painting. You look at um, a hand by Raphael, you know, and you notice that he has a darkness where the fingers come out of the hand. He puts a dot, but he generally doesn't put five dots. He'll put two dots and three dots, and you, you make that observation, that stays with you for the rest of your life, you know? Or you look at uh, the, the way Sargent paints hair. If you're going to copy the way Sargent paints hair or Raphael, you'd be making very boring things. But if you think about it, it, it opens a range of what you can do.